Hi, my name is Andy. I'm from Orbit Media Studios, and I'm making this video to teach people about Google Authorship and Google Author Stats. So there's been big changes, as always, in the search engines lately, especially Google, and you may have noticed that as you search for things that you're seeing people's faces appear. Little profile pictures are appearing in search results, and what this is is it's, it's a program they've started called Google Authorship. So what I want to do is to show you how it works, how to set it up, and how to measure it. So let's start with a, a search results page. Now let's go to google.com, and I'm going to search for a phrase. I just searched for this phrase, Google Authorship. So uh, I'm going to show you how this works in an example using the phrase itself. So Google Authorship returns these results. These are the top 10 search results for Google Authorship. You can see the top one is a Google Plus page, followed by uh, a google.com page. Here's a Google support page. But the fourth listing down, and the fifth and some others, this is actually a, a, a blog post on KISS metrics about Google authorship, written by me, and here is my face in Google search results. It says it's by Andy Crestadina, and my profile picture, Google Plus profile picture, is right there. So, how does that get there? There's actually three methods for getting Google authorship to work. Uh, the first one is actually just by verifying your email address and making sure that your email address appears somewhere on the on the post that you've written. Tends not to work, don't recommend it, lots of trouble with that. There's another method that's called the three link method. This is uh, when you link from a post that you've written to an author bio page on the same website and link from that author bio page to your Google Plus profile page. This one's also kind of problematic and not relevant to everyone. It's really, to me, seems more suitable for large blog sites with lots of uh, authors contributing. Uh, so we're going to focus on the two-link method, which to me is the easiest, and uh, I'm going to show you how to set that up now. So, on this, prof on this article, Google Authorship, How to Get Your Picture to Appear in Google Search Results, it's an article about how to do this, and you could read this. I'll link to it. There's a link down below this video where you can uh, find this, or you can obviously find it by searching. In the bottom of the article, there's a link to uh, my Google Plus profile down here about the author. Andy is the strategic director of Orbit Media, a web design company. Naturally, this article is connected to Andy's Google Plus profile. There's the link to Google Plus. Now, this link has two special tags that go with it. Uh, they're the same tag, but in two places. That tag is rel equals author. Here's the actual code for that tag, for that, uh, for that link. A rel equals author right here. This is the, uh, the first instance of this, this tag in the link. Uh, this is for HTML5, technically. It uh, doesn't matter. I just recommend putting it in there. The other place that it appears is at the end of the link. It's appended at the end of the link. This is technically for HTML4 websites. But regardless, what we've done is I've added a link from here to my Google Plus profile that says rel equals author. In other words, the relationship between this post and the page behind the click on this link is that of content to an author you know, the writing to the writer. So uh, that's half of, it, that's half of uh, how Google Authorship works. We're halfway there. Um, the other half is to simply tell your Google Plus profile page that you are a contributor to this website. So let's look at my Google Plus profile page. Here we are. Here's, my, here's the About page. And if we scroll down, we'll see that there's a place to add all kinds of links. You can add other profiles, and you can add general links. There's also links that say that you're a contributor to different websites. So here's where we want to tell Google Plus that we are contributing to that website where our post appeared. In other words, Google Authorship works for guest blogging. You could put this all over the internet. You could blog anywhere you want and still link to it, and it, Google will identify that you're the author of that content. It makes it kind of fun. So to do that, all we need to do is to come up here, and as I'm going to edit my profile, Come down here. Now we're editing the profile. Any area that I hover over, it's going to give me the chance to make changes to it. So I'm going to edit the contributor to links. And in this case, here's the KISS metrics link if I wanted to edit that. I've actually not just linked to uh, blog.kissmetrics.com. I've linked to the actual post. I had trouble getting it to work at first. I find that this is a way to troubleshoot it. If you're not writing a whole lot of posts as a guest blogger on that site, you can link directly to the post. This seems to make it uh, help that relationship get made. Um, so that's how you do it. These are all places I've guest blog, and Google Authorship is working for all of them. Um, kind of a lot of fun. So 
Now that you've done that, you basically added rel equals author on the page that you've written, on the link to your Google Plus profile, and on your Google Plus profile, you've said that you're a contributor to that blog or to that website. Uh, that's basically it. Now, the benefit of doing this, this really makes sense for people that are writing blog posts. Uh, if you're not a writer, of course, it doesn't make sense that you're not an author of anything. But it also makes sense if you're writing blog posts that are optimized for search. You're not going to see the, your profile picture appear there, or no one will see it appear there, unless that's going to be a page that ranks. So I recommend that you use this for uh, any article that you've written, particularly those that you've uh, researched a key phrase and you're deliberately targeting a phrase and have a reasonable chance of ranking for it. Otherwise, not as much of a benefit, right? It only makes it, you're not going to see your face in search results unless it's an article that's going to somehow rank for something. So it's kind of for bloggers and kind of for bloggers with uh, some SEO savvy, at least a little bit. Uh, what happens then when you do that, the real benefit is that your, your listing in the Google search results is going to be more prominent. In other words, those are all snippets that are showing up, but when yours appears there, that's a rich snippet. It's going to be more prominent because your profile picture is there. So what's the outcome of that? Really, what's the tangible benefit? It's this. The rich snippet and the picture of your face should improve the click-through rate. Should improve the click-through rate. So I've logged into Google Webmaster Tools, and here on the home page, on the left side we see labs. These are experimental features, and that's exactly what this is. Uh, I click on author stats. So author stats actually shows me, this beautiful chart, shows me the rank and number of impressions, number of clicks, and the click-through rate for all the content that I've authored and tagged for authorship, uh, whether or not it's on my website. This could be on other websites, including that one we just looked at, the blog post on Kissmetrics. So that the blog post on Kissmetrics, the average position or the rank is six, a little over six, so it ranks in the middle of the page, generally speaking. It's been seen 18,000 times in the last month. This is a one-month uh, report. Um, 18,000 impressions. It's been clicked 1,600 times, giving it a click-through rate of 8%. So uh, all the content that I've written in Tag for Google Authorship all appears in here. It shows me the rank, the number of impressions, the clicks, the click-through rate. So the idea is that Google Authorship is actually affecting the click-through rate. And when your snippet has a picture of you, it's going to get more clicks relative to unsigned content or content that just has a regular snippet. Beautiful, right? Author stats now. We can see how our content's ranking, if it's on our site or any site. Uh, love this feature. Uh, the question, though, that we keep getting is, does uh, authorship help your content rank higher? The answer is no. Uh, we just did an interview with Sigar Kamdar, the engineer that created Google Authorship at Google. Uh, he tells us no. Google has 200-some search signals, they call them, or search engine ranking factors. That's not one of them. So don't expect that just because you've signed something, it's going to actually rank higher. However, uh, don't ex don't, I wouldn't put it past them. So Google actually took out a patent on this. Uh, it's the, the agent rank patent, and we're looking at it here. This is USPTO.gov. It's an, some insights into what Google is actually working on or what they're thinking about, at least what they're patenting the right to do. And in the author uh, rank patent, down here somewhere deep inside the patent, we can see it says this. Assuming that a given agent or author uh, has a high reputational score, representing an established reputation for authoring valuable content, then additional content authored and signed by that author will be promoted, in other words, rank higher, uh, relative to unsigned content or content from less reputable authors in search results. So Google has the right to, uh, they've patented the right to help content rank higher. Uh, it's not happening yet, um, but no reason not to tag your content accordingly. So we recommend using authorship. Hopefully this video was useful in helping you uh, add that tag, add the contributor to links, uh, and then measure the results in uh, author stats. Uh, this is a very simple overview. Uh, if you're reading this on or watching this on overmedia.com, you can scroll down and you'll see uh, some links to, we'll link to the patent there. Um, we can link to some other resources, some troubleshooting tips, and uh, we'll include the text from the interview with Sigar Kamdar, um, uh, who, the, who created Google Authorship. So there you go. Hopefully this was worthwhile. We love making these. It's kind of fun. Um, so uh, feel free to uh, check back and see what else we're working on and uh, what other tips we can teach. Um, it's a lot of fun and uh, happy if this is useful to you. So again, it's Andy from Orbit Media, and hope to see you again.